Hello fellow gamers, Cryptic Panther back. Some more Tomb Raider. So in the last episode, we started to craft the manor uh, DLC. And we made it through the first little section. Skated around upstairs. We had to find a flashlight. Which we found. Right right there. So let's uh, check out this book. The offer came in the post last week. And I still haven't told Richard. He flew ahead to Tibet, where I will meet him shortly. I never told him I was submitting my work. Never thought there was a chance of being accepted. Oh, but a gallery tour is not something I can pass up. The show will take me away from England for over a year. I'll begin in New York and travel across the United States and... Oh, God! I'm giddy even writing these words. When Rich and I were married, I was prepared to relegate my painting to a hobby. But it was Richard who objected, who gave me my atelier and studio. Without that support, I might still be painting boring landscapes. Now I can't shake the foolish sensation that leaving would be a betrayal. He will laugh at that and insist I accept, even though I know it will break his heart to be apart. He never once asked me to sacrifice any part of my life for his. I have, of course, in a thousand small ways over the years, but he would never ask. The discussion can wait, and I will join him in Tibet. I won't cast a shadow over his find. I will be by his side in his triumph, as I know he will stand by my side in time. Well, there you have it. I well, guess we're gonna find out what happened to Clara's mother. Eventually, I'd say. Oh, oh papers. Amelia, the news has reached Mother. She knows that you broke off your engagement with the Earl of Farringdon. She is beside herself with worry. But, for the moment, she's controlling the narrative. As far as anyone knows, you're just having innocent second thoughts. But the moment your affair with Lord Croft goes public, it will be too late. Our name will be as ruined as this man you've chosen to bed. Don't you see that you're being selfish, Amelia? Please, consider your family. You're a de Mornay. Everything you do has a greater effect on us all. I'm coming down to London soon. Don't do anything rash until we have a chance to talk. Old Uncle Six's nose in everybody's fucking business. Alright. Turn your way down to the creepy ass passageway. <gasps> Whoa, shit. Falling apart. Maybe I should just let my uncle have this place. Maybe. I gotta find a key and come back to these They doors. say a good test of a relationship is how well you travel together. Well, I'd say Amelia and I have passed that test with flying colors. Indeed, these last few months in Egypt have been nothing short of extraordinary. She and Roth get on like old uni chums. In fact, the two have spent more than a few nights drinking and playing cards into the wee hours. Despite her decidedly proper upbringing, Amelia's taken to roughing it more than I ever have. She fits in and connects with the local populace with such amazing empathy. Because of her, I've had a bit of an unexpected breakthrough in my research. She managed to convince an artifact dealer in Old Town to sell me a magnificent and quite unusual Tibetan scroll. From what I can tell, it seems to contain details surrounding an immortality ritual of some sort. I think it's time for me to take the next step with Amelia. In fact, I don't think I can wait any longer. I will ask for her hand tomorrow in the bright Egyptian sun amidst the dust and ruins. I'm not surprised he asked her to marry him as soon as he got the idea. A little impulsive, was he? I mean, creepy sounding. Huh? 
have yourself some hooch. Won't be drunk. Oh, is that a rat? Rat the wine cellar. I know we have had our differences in recent years. I've tried my best to keep an open mind about your relationship with Richard, but I just can't let you go on this ill-conceived expedition without saying my piece. You say Richard's theories have merit. You say that he may have actually stumbled upon some mythic unknown truth, but I have seen nothing to support such claims. And while your word may have been enough in times past, I cannot let you squander away what remains of your name and reputation and that of our family, truth be told, on some damned foolish crusade. I intend to go to Richard's investors and let them know exactly how he's spending their money, but I want to give you a chance to put a stop to this yourself. Please, don't go to Tibet. If not for me, at least for Lara. Uncle fucking knows the atlas again. What the fuck am I down here? Still just as creepy as I remember. Oh, damn. I have a fucking party. Ah. Alright, let's drag this upstairs and go get wrecked. Okay, okay, we have to get through the door. My lord, I hope this missive finds you on a successful expedition and in good health. Before I bore you with estate affairs, I wanted to let you know that our little angel has been into some mischief. As always, I indulged her in our usual game of chess. Over the course of the game, she broached the subject of her mother. She's having trouble remembering her now, and wanted to enter her ladyship's atelier, which you sealed off, to play on her mother's piano. It enraged her when she wasn't allowed to go in, of course. For someone so young, she has such strong emotions. Later in the day, she set a trap for me in the walk-in freezer of all places. Before I knew what was happening, I found myself locked inside. Mrs. Sheffield discovered me an hour later, shivering and somewhat peeved. It took us an additional hour to find Lara in the grounds. I know all her hiding places, of course, but this time she really did not want to be found. Call it years of observation, but I can tell when she's out of sorts. My lord, if I may be so bold, she misses you fiercely. She is lonely for her father. Please consider a call as soon as you are able. She was a feisty one as a young lass. <laughs> Poor Winston. I remember being so angry. He was always so patient with me. King to Queen One. I'm going to win this time, Winston. <laughs> Clever girl. But you should know by now, winning isn't everything. Queen to King's Bishop Six. Check. Easy for you to say. You always win. Knight takes Queen. What I mean to say is try to enjoy the journey, Lara. Don't rush to victory. Bishop to King Seven. I know, Winston. I just want... Oh no! I didn't even see that! You should also know by now, I'm not to be trifled with on this board, young lady. Mate. Oh, I am going to win. Someday. Really? I need a crowbar. Jesus Christ, I need a crowbar, I need keys. I would play chess with our old butler Winston on this board. Never could beat him. What am I looking for? I always chose white. Maybe if I let him go first once in a while, I might have won. 
Maybe. So we need a crowbar and a master key. Okay. I'm at a crossroads now. Good lord, that's such a cliche. But there's truth in it. Two roads before me. Both present joy and compromise. A life with Richard, adventure, intellectual pursuit, perhaps a new family, but also a man obsessed with something I cannot understand. Or a life of obligation, upholding the de Mornay name, embracing our traditions, not losing the family that raised me. Oh, this really is a rubbish choice. I don't want to lose them, but I love the life I've started to build with Richard. He comes with his own difficulties, but I can accept them. Will it be enough? It must have been. She ended up marrying him. Okay, so... There's a lot of reading going on in this. This thing and then we'll move that. Everything is almost ready for Mistress Lara's birthday expedition surprise. It's been a bit of an all hands on deck effort organizing the affair and keeping it secret. She's obsessed with Egypt, memorizing hieroglyphs and ancient Egyptian districts, so she'll be delighted with what Lord Croft has come up with. This will be good for her. She's been acting up of late. But I know she's just craving more of her father's attention. He's been so buried in his research. It'll be a nice moment for the two of them to reconnect. And I do believe he needs it as much as she does. Well, at least they didn't totally forget the child, I guess. Bearing this. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa. Please let go of it. Glitching. Grab this. Pull it back. Alright. Wait, there's something else here? Dad loves a key. good bottle of wine. Hmm. I can still smell his favorite Bordeaux. Getting a crowbar would be nice. Dad, this is it! The basement of despair! Indeed, Lara. Muster your courage, for this is the only path to the Library of Infinite Knowledge. Look there! See the string? An ancient Egyptian tripwire. The Keepers of Knowledge want none to disturb their treasures. We must tread carefully. Let me lead. I know how to spot all the traps. I'm sure you do, my darling. Lead on! I gotta get in there somehow. I take it. I'm going like it'd be something you have to investigate. Gross! You got a fucking change of pants. damage from the main hall above. What's this? One of the wire traps Winston made for my birthday expedition. Examining it. It's not much to look at. Winston used my hair ribbons to make this. He and Dad put a lot of work into this birthday surprise. Now, 
Which way do I go? I'm getting turned around here. This way I came in. Oops, this. <laughs> My stuffed bear. I couldn't have a tomb without a mummy. Yeah, <laughs> funny. Okay, so yeah, I can chill here. Alright. There is nothing. This way. Alright, so nothing there right now. So I come in. Huh. I guess it yeah, I guess it doesn't make a difference. It just kinda of loops me back around. Okay. Alright. Make sure there was no passageway I didn't explore. What the fucking grow bar? Alright, before I go any further, um, to the basement down here, I guess we'll, uh, I guess we'll end the episode here. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you next time.